What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Ziegler from Cycle News and today you're going to watch a very cool bike test, at least I think it's cool. Uh, it's very unique, we don't usually get to do this with bike tests, we usually get to compare brand new bikes against another brand new bike or maybe last year's bike versus this year's bike, but today we're going to go on an adventure bike test where we're taking two bikes that are 10 years apart. All right, we got up to the top of the mountain. Well, I guess it's the edge of the mountain, but we rode a bunch of dirt roads today. I got time on both bikes, the 990 and the new Ducati Desert X. Um, a lot of fun. Before I get into like what I think is the winner or the best bike here, I think we should talk to the bike owners. It's really important to see where these bikes are coming from. There's a little bit of backstory here. So Climb, the apparel company, is starting a project where they're going the full length of South America for a content project. Uh, with these two gentlemen. On my right, we have Tolga Basol. Tolga is a world traveler. Uh, he's an ex -world, ex world traveler. He has a real job now. He's uh, gone around the world on 1190. He's owned, I think we counted 12 or 13 motorcycles, including this one in his lifetime. And he's younger than I am, so he's got me beat by about you know six or seven bikes. On my left is Lucas Eddy. If you watch the super hard hard enduro series we put on, you know that this guy's a decent off-road motorcyclist. I'm not gonna say he's good, just because he beats me doesn't mean anything. But he's new to adventure. This is basically his first full-size adventure bike. He's been like an XR650L guy before this. So coming from two perspectives, I wanna get their take on why they think these are the best bikes to take on such an epic trip. Man, I just wanted a performance-oriented adventure bike on a budget, basically. That's what I was looking for, because I had ridden KLRs, XRs, all that stuff, and those have some lackluster qualities on the highway and on long twisty roads and those kind of things that I want to enjoy. And then the added bonus of the 990 is like the legend status of this bike. It's kind of like a, the 950 and the 990 kind of have like a massively legendary uh, heritage. But really, I ended up getting super lucky with a great price for a bike that hasn't been super molested by crazy previous owners. There's only been a couple previous owners as well. So I just got really lucky for the price I got this for, which is six grand plus total OEM parts and total other parts added to it was another like two and a half thousand ish dollars total. Yep. So we're at 8,500 bucks, let's say, for this whole bike, how it sits right now. Um, and I think that's a, a killer price for what you get out of this package. I mean, it's fuel injected, it's got all, all kinds of new stuff to it. How many miles are on it? Um, it? Yeah, that's a good question. There are 24 and a half thousand miles on it when I got it. So it's like 25,000 ish right now. But really yeah. the point here is like, I've spent not as much money as other bikes, but I, what I had then is spent a tremendous amount of time here. I've spent like, sure. I, I did the rough math. It's like 50, 60 hours of labor total. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I was really anal about things like cleaning electrical connectors and all kinds of stuff you probably don't have to do, but I really went through as much of this bike as I possibly could, short of taking the whole motor apart. There's not a lot of bikes you could buy out there under 10 grand that have that performance. Reliability is yet to be determined. Yeah, I stay guess. tuned for that. I stay guess. tuned for that. <laughs> All right, now we're on to the opposite end of that spectrum. This is a brand new 2023 Ducati Desert X, literally like the newest adventure bike you could possibly buy at anywhere from any manufacturer. And this is Tolga. Tolga, tell us about your bike. The first reason I got this bike is it just looks good. It's a good looking bike. I like how it's kind of retro, but not retro, but modern, but kind of like a hybrid between this retro rally look and, um, yeah. and a modern bike. And I really don't want to spend a lot of time fixing the bike when I'm on a long journey. Uh, because I owned a lot of secondhand bikes in the past and it just proved to be not ideal circumstances. <laughs> and it reminds me of my old 990 Adventure. Actually, I owned a 990 Adventure back in Turkey uh, around 2006, 7. Okay. Around that yep. time. I hit a black one. That was one of my favorite ever bikes to ride. So this bike actually yeah. reminds me of the 990 with the you know the rally fairing style and kind of like the mm -hmm. narrow but tall stance yeah i like that one and obviously um i like the safety features to be honest with you all the you know the traction control and all that yeah. stuff which most people say oh i don't need that but once you get used to it actually it's pretty safe and i bought it new because i just wanted to build as build it as i want it to be yeah sure Road ready so then uh, i didn't even i brought it home I took apart almost, you know, everything out to check first to learn how to assemble and assemble it back, like, you know, how to take the tank mm -hmm. off and how to do some maintenance work. So I did yeah. that and I installed the parts I want. 
overall I really like this bike. I like how it rides, I like how it looks. Yeah, what do you think nice. your, what, what did the retail price you buy the bike for? And then what do you think you have into it with modifications and custom parts that you wanted for the ride? Um, I think I spent around like 23. 23,000 yes. sitting here. Yeah. Got you. Okay. <laughs> I well, don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, it, like you said, if you can afford it, you can uh, get the latest and greatest with all the comfort again, no features. Kids, no, no kids. No kids. He's got a job. No wife, no kids, no child support. <laughs> <laughs> Right, now we got to get down to the nitty gritty. Which one of these bikes is the best? Well, I don't know if that's going to be a straightforward answer because they're 10 years apart. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have changed in adventure motorcycling in the last 10 years. Think of uh, off-road ABS, off-road specific traction control, uh, engine braking adjustment, um, uh, rally modes where you can adjust all those things independently, uh, quick shift. Uh, this bike has none of those things. This bike doesn't even have ABS. There's no ABS on this bike. It's a bare bones dirt bike that is pretending to be a street bike sometimes. And that's how it was designed. Like the original KTM 950, 990 platform wasn't designed to be a long distance comfort touring bike. It's a performance off-road adventure bike. It defined that class of aggressive adventure riding. Uh, the polar opposite of a BMW GS crowd, and it was intentional. And I mean, the bike was literally developed as a race bike, and you can feel that every time you ride it. On the other side of the hand, the Ducati has a hybrid sort of mentality where it has to be capable on the road. It has to have Ducati DNA built into it where it's a high performance street performing motorcycle. But if it's going to come into this off-road world, it has to live up to the KTM standard. Like it or not, KTM has set the standard in off-road performance when it comes to big ass dirt bikes that people ride on the road. So uh, I think some of the conclusions are fairly obvious, but uh, before we start, we equalized these as much as we could. We filled them up with gas. We weighed them back at the house before we came. Um, everything's basically like we're doing a manufacturer versus manufacturer shootout, but the bikes just happen to be a decade apart. Uh, we even fitted the tires the same. These are the brand new uh, Dunlop Trail Max Raid, uh, very aggressive touring tire, I would say. So you're getting actual off-road, aggressive knob performance, but still highway durable, high mileage capable tire. This is a tire a lot of people have been waiting for Dunlop to make, coming off the heels of, you know, a 909 or 908 rally tire that is just too aggressive for touring across another country, really, uh, without blowing through tires too fast. Um, and then, you know, a Trail Max Mission, which is more of a street tire where you get off-road, it's losing some performance. So this tire's really hitting that world traveler or somebody that's gonna go across the country or even the BDR type guy, this tire's really hitting that mark. So we put the same tires on them. Uh, we got the same rider on them. I rode them all day today, switched back and forth. I didn't let Lucas or Tolga talk to me at all about the performance of the bikes. I would had earmuffs on all day. When it comes down to it, the KTM shines in a lot of ways that have to do with its character. It's got a very lively character. It's very in tune with the person riding it because it's got so much raw connectivity to you. Like it literally vibrates in the same frequency that the engine pulses are going up and down with the pistons. And you are directly in control of that with your hand. There's no electronic disconnect. There's throttle bodies that open as soon as they crack a little bit, the engine responds. Uh, it's really clean fueling. Um, it sounds amazing with the twin pipes on it. It sounds like a mini trophy truck. Uh, he's got a Rottweiler intake in it, which is also increasing the volume as the air goes in. So we have like this weird hot rod mentality with this bike where you want to hear that air coming in and you want, definitely want to hear it leaving. And that's really how this bike becomes, is, is, is a hot rod bike. And 
just like a guy rebuilding a hot rod, you're not gonna go out and maybe race it, but you're gonna take it for a ride and you're gonna listen to it and it's gonna make you smile. You're gonna go slow through the Dairy Queen parking lot so everybody sees you and everybody hears you and you're gonna leave a little more aggressively so everybody knows you left. That's what the KTM 990 is still really good at. It's also very good at being a stable performer off-road. Suspension package is still hard to beat. Um, this isn't completely stock. It's been revalved or serviced at some point in its life in the past 10 years. Um, but even back to back, this suspension holds up as good at least, if not better than the all new Ducati Desert X suspension. When you get into real sharper, aggressive bumps, when you're going on highway stuff or you're going on sweeping stuff, they're pretty equal. And the more road or more aggressive like street style riding you do, the Ducati just starts shining more and more and more. But as far as like having a analog connectivity to motorcycling, nothing really does it better than the old 990. It's just got such a soul inside of it when you ride it, you are connected to it and it just makes you happy. Yeah, you might have to stop and find out where that oil is coming from later and maybe your brakes will stop working like ours did today. But man, when it's working with you, you're gonna be really, really happy. All right, let's switch on over to the Ducati side of the world. Now, I think the Desert X came in kind of one of those bikes similar to Yamaha Tenere 700. When everybody saw it, they're like, that's it. Like, that's the bike that's gonna replace the sort of legend of the 990. It looks like a rally bike. It's gonna handle like a rally bike. And then you start looking closer and you see the tanks up high. It's a big bulbous kind of tank. It's hidden well into the frame and the fairings that they built to kind of mask it. But as soon as you get closer, you're like, oh, that might not be as good as I think it is. It might not handle like a 990 with that low slung fuel feeling. Um, and then the first time I rode the Desert X against a KTM 890, which is the epitome of low slung fuel and good handling in that chassis, it was really surprising. The Ducati has, if anything, stability on its side. And stability not in a lazy, like straight line only stability sense. It's stable everywhere. It's stable off camber. It's stable when you're turning and doing slide outs. It's stable off road on single track and crappy terrain and loose rocks and hard rocks that are stuck in the dirt and you're bouncing off all those. The bike stays stable, but it still is playful. It has a lot of excitement inside of it uh, because of the motor uh, configuration and basically the performance of the motor. It's losing some of that direct connectivity that the analog 990 has. It's losing some of that sort of like soulful, uh, legendary retro feel. But what it comes with is every creature conference, every performance benefit, every rider aid that they have invented is on this bike. If you can get through the menu and find out how to turn them on and turn them off, which you can, the more you ride it, the better it gets, but it's not intuitive right off the bat. You're gonna love heated grips when we run through the rain today. I was freezing. It's been summer here, 150 degrees every day. We get up in the mountains and it rains on us. I was not prepared for that, but I had heated grips on the Ducati, so I was happy. Uh, has cruise control. Like I said before, it has every one of the rider aids you can do for off-road performance. And people, you know, poo-poo talk off-road ABS and traction control, but when the engineers start uh, have been building traction control and ABS for off-road situations, it's amazing and you should definitely try it before you knock it. It works. Uh, the bike in general is more stable on softer terrain. Um, it has a longer wheelbase, so it just kind of like doesn't get as twitchy or doesn't knife in or understeer nearly as much as a 990 does. Um, it has a little bit better wind protection from the windshield, uh, but it loses a little bit on your feet and your lower legs where the 990 has these big tanks that just kind of knock all the air around you. And also the 990 makes a lot more heat, so maybe I'm warmer just riding that bike. Uh, you get a modern, the most modern adventure bike that you can buy right now. Um, this is the newest bike on the block in that full-size sub 1000 cc market. Uh, it has great display, it has great mounts, it has great accessories like Tolga's been talking about. Um, I think it's uh, a revelation for Ducati to come into that market, literally a market dominated by KTM, challenged by Yamaha, you know, approached by Triumph. And there's a lot of people going, they call it midsize, even though they're 950 cc to 1000 cc bikes. But that midsize ADV market below the 1200 cc monsters is busy now. And for Ducati to come in with this bike and deliver something that 
can challenge for the throne easily in a comparison with multiple bikes uh, is a really test good testament to how great this bike is. I would feel 100% comfortable taking this bike anywhere in the world as long as I could figure out how to change the menu items through the thumb controls because that's the confusing part. Uh, it's, it's up in the air, man. Like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna take a bike that's brand new, probably totally reliable and really bitching and performs arguably better across the board? Or are you gonna take something that is uh, got a lot of soul and is a bucket list bike for a lot of people? Both of these bikes are bucket list bikes. Like, who wouldn't want either of these things? All right, everybody, that's a wrap on this crazy bike test. Uh, make sure you follow along the Climb Motorcycle YouTube channel. Uh, they're going to be going on the South American trip really soon. Drop comments and questions below to these guys and I'll get a hold of them and we can answer like any crazy stuff that's come up or hey, have you checked this part? If you have any tips that they should check, especially Lucas, go ahead and drop that out there. Check the link that we drop in up here, over there or down there, I don't know where it is. That's the build video for Tolga's bike. It's really cool. And finally, don't forget to check out the Cycle News article. You can subscribe for cycle news for free you get an email every week we drop an issue that's 50 issues a year we do a cycle news every week but we get kind of lazy and take two weeks off so check out the story in cycle news enjoy the video drop comments below which is your bucket list adventure bike and which one of these bikes would you choose because we got these two guys they're gonna prove one of us wrong in south america soon